Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, for anybody that's new, I'm Reverend Michael Everett Davis, spiritual leader here at Unity of Indianapolis. It's good to see everybody here. So, first of all, I titled today's talk, The Greatest Gift. And before I get any further into this, I want to make sure that it's clear that we're talking about love, in case you hadn't figured it out yet. This house is built on love, love, chant, love, love is all there is. The greatest gift is to receive love. The greatest gift is to give love. Love your neighbor, love your enemy, love yourself. We, we know this. We've heard it a billion times. But do we live this? The author of today's Daily Word says, I aspire to help create a world that works for all. That's some huge aspirations right there. But it's to not do it yourself, but to help. Help create a world that works for all. And the scripture verse that was along with that was Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. And they, they shortened it. The full two verses are, He himself granted that some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up the body of Christ. And at the beginning of this particular section in Ephesians, in Ephesians 4, this letter that Paul was writing to the people of uh, Ephesus, he says, I beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling for which you have been called. Each of us has our own calling, our own unique connection with source, with the universe, with God. We are each expressions of the divine in our own unique way. We show up in different ways. We all have different talents or unique ways of shining the light of God into the world, onto the world. Some are, uh, some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, healers, mystics, musicians, accountants, doctors, actors, customer service representatives or whatever yours is. Use it in a manner of your highest good. And by expressing the Christ spirit in us, we build the body of Christ. We are the body, the outer expression of the Christ consciousness. The, the I am, the divine mind. So we're going to go back to the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with, right? When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. All right? So... But yeah, when you, when you read, in order to learn to read, you have the ABCs. You start off with the ABCs, and all of those letters together is everything that you need to be able to express yourself, to create words, sentences, to get thoughts and ideas out there. And with singing, Do, Re, Mi is those first three notes on a scale. And... Then that entire scale, that's everything that you need to create a song, to create music, to express yourself, to get that out there. So spiritually, I was thinking about this. So we have the ABCs, the Do, Re, Mi's. So spiritually, what do we have? We have I, divine radiates as me. Do, Re, Mi. Divine radiates as me. 
So just remember that. Keep that in your, your subconscious, actually in your conscious, through the rest of this service. God, divine radiates as me. So, Genesis. Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created. God said, let there be. It was good. In John 1, it states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, some, some folks in traditional Christian churches, or as Eric Butterworth likes to call it, the, the religion about Jesus, uh, they interpret the Word as, as Jesus, that Jesus was the Word. And, and of course, Jesus is... Uh, the synonym, or Christ is used as a synonym for Jesus, which Christ we know is not a last name or a name, it's a title. It's, it's, a, it's a, a level of consciousness that we reach. And the Christ is the divine idea. So that's the divine, the divine idea of man is, is the Christ. Jesus represents God's idea of man in expression. So I will interpret the word word as divine idea. So in the beginning is divine mind. Divine mind said, I have an idea. Let there be. Divine idea became flesh, divine expression. And it is good. So this is, the, this is creation. Creation starts in divine mind, becomes divine thought, becomes divine expression. And the creation or creativity, creativity is expressed as a threefold expression of God, or what some call the trinity at unity. Divine mind, divine idea, divine expression. All three are one. It's not three separate things, it's one thing. It is the divine, or it is the divine. The divine mind, idea, and expression. And alongside of that, we have the three phases of humankind's consciousness. Superconscious, subconscious, and conscious. All are consciousness, all are divine. Divine mind and superconscious are together. The subconscious and divine idea are together, and conscious and divine expression are all on the one same idea, or same, same level. And then we have our humankind. We have the threefold nature of humankind, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is of the divine mind. It's the I am, the, the Christ consciousness. And the soul, which is on the subconscious line, along with divine idea. The soul is where we receive messages from the divine. And also receive messages from the world. And then the body, it's, it's what's manifested. It is the, the, what we are conscious of, what we focus on, which is then, it's the result of law of mind action so, um, so we have all three of these so we have as I put up there so we can see them all on the same level so it's all really three it's three aspects of us as well because we are created by God in the image of God therefore we are a part of, of the divine so we all these are all phases of us. But what we see here on earth is a result of law, mind, action. Which many of us here in this room are familiar with. Thoughts held in mind. Produce after their kind. Right. So thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. And again, I was thinking that last month we said change is possible. So I'm looking at this as thoughts held in mind create in their kind, or create in kind. What we think about, 
we bring about. So what's happening is, in our subconscious, or our soul, it's a sponge. It's the receiver of messages from, from, from the divine, from spirit, from the Christ consciousness. It's also a receiver of messages from the world. It's our, the thoughts that are, that are projected out there. It could be error thoughts, those thoughts of less than, those thoughts of unworthy, those thoughts of I'm not good enough, or those thoughts of they are better than I am. And so it's within that that we discern these thoughts. But if we hold that thought, whatever thought we hold is what we will see. If we hold the thought that this job is really, really hard for me, it's like, oh my gosh, this job is so hard. <sighs> I gotta go to work, this job is so hard. Guess what? That job is hard. If you change that thought to, I can do this job. One way, I can do this job. I can do it. I can do this job. It becomes easier. It may still be challenging, but you know that you can do it. And you're, so, but it just changes your perception. And again, perhaps someone's done something and it's made us angry. We're like, oh, I am ticked off. This person just, oh, they make me mad. <laughs> oh, this person makes me mad. You just, you just continue. Whenever you see them, oh my gosh, I'm mad. It's you. It's, you, know, you. You put all of that on them. You project that anger on them. Instead of saying, this person makes me mad, my body is feeling anger. Hmm. I can let that go. It's like your body is feeling it. You are experiencing it. It's not who you are. But when we say I am, then we're saying that's who we are. If we say that I am angry, you're going to manifest anger. And if you say it's this person makes me angry, they're always going to make you angry. If you say I am sad, guess what? You're going to, you're going to be sad. I am feeling sad right now, but you know what? I know I'm love. I am a child of God. Change that thought. I've said this many, many times. Change that thought of lack to, to that of I am love. I am worthy. I am good enough. I am love. That will bring us back to love. Okay. <laughs> so, we know that God is love. We are, ch we are children of God, so we are love. We, in turn, express love. Divine mind is love. Divine idea is love. Divine expression is love. So going back to Ephesians 4, where it said the calling that you're called to do. Love is the calling that we are called to do. We are the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers sent to equip the saints. It is the love manifested or manifesting in us that is building the body of Christ, building and expanding the Christ consciousness that we are divine beings. And I have some quotes here from Dr. Maya Angelou. Love is that condition in the healing spirit so profound that it allows us to forgive. Someone does something you feel anger. But remember that they are an expression of God's love. Love them. Love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, leaps fences, penetrates walls, 
to arrive at its destination full of hope. You can express love. We can send love to people across the planet who are hurting, who are in need of love, in need of that support. We don't have to be right there with them. The love of family, the love of one person can heal. It heals the scars left by a larger society. Hmm. She says the love of family. So we can define that as the, the people that you share genes with. <laughs> Not blue genes, actually. <laughs> But the, fa the people that, was like, I, I, have, I have friends that I call my family of choice, and friends from college that we've stuck together. We are, we are a family of choice. We are a family in this room. But, and some, some have wounds from, from their previous religions. The love here can heal that. The love that we have for anyone who, is, who has been wounded. The wounds of, of an LBGTQ plus child who is being told that they're wrong. Who's being told that they need to change. They're being told that you are not right. Our love can help heal them to know that they are a perfect child of God, just as they are. They are a divine expression. They are what God is doing through them. So I'm going to move back over to the piano, and uh, we're going to we're going to sing. I'm going to sing a song. We're going to sing a song. Uh, if you want to sing along, you can. Um, if you want to sing along, it's in the hymnal, actually, number 241. It's called The Greatest Thing. And this song has been sung millions and millions of times in this building. But I have a feeling whenever it's sung... We're singing to God out here somewhere. Today, remember, divine radiates as me. So today, as that divine light of the divine of, of God of the universe, we're going to sing it to the divine mind. Make sense? So just think of it that way. It is not, we're not, actually, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We're not going to sing it to, to this song is, is coming from the divine mind to us, that radiant light. So we're not singing to God up here, okay? This is not a, a separate thing because we know we are connected. We know our one. This is the divine, whatever you want to call it. God, Spirit, Lord, whatever that highest being is that we are a part of is singing this to you. You, that individual expression.
greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is love. to know you. The divine wants to serve you. And we serve the divine by following the calling that we are called to do. In that unique way that we are called to do it whether it's standing in front of a crowd of people talking, hopefully inspiring, hopefully enlightening, or pouring a cup of coffee as a barista. Do whatever it is that you do as love, as the, as the love of the divine that you are. If that's a parent, a grandparent, a child, be that. So we started off this portion of, of the talk, of the lesson, with the song, Be the Attitude. The song was written by my friend, Reverend Blair Tabor, and it was inspired from Philippians 2, 1 through 5. So I will end with that. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but do it in humility. Regard others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And so it is. Thank you. <laughs> 